Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's the Darkest Timeline podcast. So we've got games, movies, TV, VR, yeah, VR, and uh, stuff from the week. Certainly the week at the time that it was recorded. Uh, while I've got you, before we get started, please do consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. And if you've got a couple of spare minutes, you could leave us a review. Right, let's get started. So here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the Darkest Timeline Podcast. Hello? Alright, how are you doing? Are you well? Good. Oh, it's late in the day. I, uh, not gonna lie, I was, uh, I was spending my time wisely by watching YouTube videos and shopping for t shirts on the internet because if there is one thing this man needs more than anything in this world is more t-shirts I wonder at this point in time if I counted up how many t-shirts I owned now whether it would be in the hundreds but I'm a sucker for a t-shirt um mm. Monday, Monday as always. Um, today has been a long, long day. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Let's move on from that. Um, so, we've just had half term. Um... I was just distracted by my computer telling me that it's uh, sunny outside at five past ten at night. Um, so yeah, half term. Um, all the children. Uh, we had a few days and uh, made a critical error. So four days to work with, made a critical error. Because I was like, uh, you know, we don't want to be don't want to be doing stuff every day. Don't want to be out every day. We want them to have the opportunity to um, be in and, and play. And you don't want anybody getting too tired and all of these things. Then you you, you book in a, a day of not going out and doing stuff. And then by like three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, definitely should have gone out today. Um. It just ends up feeling like like a limbo thing because I think like I think the children get into like a, a routine of doing stuff and then suddenly it's like slam on the brakes um, and it's not it's not that they forget how to play but I suppose when you're like in and out in and out doing stuff going here going there going everywhere to then be like oh, you don't have to do that, you know, we're not, we're not getting in the car, we're not going out today, it's like, oh, so what do I do now, um, but hey, so, uh, went and did some clothes shopping, excuse me one second, I need to grab my drink, I had a horrible coughing fit earlier, and I feel like I've, <laughs> like, torn something, I laughed at a at a terrible moment in time. Um, as I was, I was I was putting some food in my mouth, I laughed and kind of inhaled a little bit of something and it aggravated the throat and I just kept coughing and coughing and coughing. So um, apologies if if I'm a bit gravelly. Um, so clothes shopping. It's one of those things, every now and then, needs to be done, needs must, and all that. Um, I was thinking about this at the time. (laughs) 
I mentioned to somebody today, somebody asked me what I'd done with like the the four day weekend. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I'm spending time with all the children. Um, and mentioned that we'd gone clothes shopping. And they're like, oh, oh, but I bet as a dad, you, you love that. And I was like, eh, maybe I'm weird, but I kind of do. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I suppose from from early on, with having like all these girls, um, I kind of resigned myself to to clothes shopping being a thing, and I kind of weirdly enjoy it. It's um, it's nice because my children are very individual, they're very much themselves, they very they very much know their own style. I have very little input a lot of the time when especially dealing with my eldest, my eldest knows um her own style very well. Um and narrows stuff down real quick. I like to I like to Basically, I work on the principle, if you're going to buy five things, you should pick ten and then whittle them down. And that's always the way that I've done it with her. And she's very good at it. Um, sometimes she's a little unsure. So there was this, there was a situation with this top. Um, and I could tell that she was unsure and I could tell it was a confidence issue. Um, and eventually, when talking to her about it, she said, I just don't know whether it would suit me. And I was like, well, you know, it's, it's bright, it's colourful, it's a, it's a cool style. Um, but the only way to find out is to try it on or, or hold it up in front of the mirror. We went hunting for um, changing rooms, which during the the times of the pandemic they got rid of them all I'm like oh we don't have change rooms anymore but you've got a hundred days to return an item it's like oh, okay so i was like look you know let's go let's go find a mirror and we'll just you know we'll just look i was like i think i think this top will suit you so we went through the process of having a look to see what it would look like and i was like it looks fine to me i think i think it's I think it's good to go. And here's the thing. We bought multiple top slash t-shirts slash whatever. Got some shorts and stuff. You know, getting ready for the, the summer. And uh, can anybody guess of all the items we bought, what was the first item that she chose to wear out of what we bought? That's right. The top she was unsure about. The top that she wasn't sure of, didn't wasn't sure wasn't confident enough about. So stuff like that, I I enjoy and I like. And we went to get my eldest stuff, and then obviously you know my middle daughter ends up with a jacket. Why not? I got the youngest some slippers. Um, so, day one, clothes shopping. Day two, I'm like, right, we're going to go into town. Now, my youngest loves going into town. Um, she's got this whole, whole routine these days. Um, often involves going to, uh, the tattooist, weirdly. And, uh. Uh, everybody there gives her some money, which uh, I'm like, oh, you'll be able to use your money to buy your, buy your own cheese straws, which uh, doesn't ever seem to happen. She, her money goes in her money box, which is very strange. Um, I was like, right, we're going to go into town. So my youngest is like, oh, do you, do you guys like going into town? And they're like, yeah, whatever. I was like, but we're going to go and look for comics. 
So this is a much longer story. And the story goes like this. Uh, myself and a friend gone into town, met up in town, and we were walking past the comic shop in town. And there was a sign up and it was like, uh, free comic book day. And I was like, ooh, I wonder when free comic book day is. You know, can't be free comics. And it was like, uh, da, 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 set the date and stuff, Saturday and all of this. And I looked and I was like, that's today. Let's go. Let's go in. So we went in, big pile of free comics. I put them in a bag. I was like, oh, there's something there for each of the girls to enjoy. Um, but interestingly enough, my eldest kind of latched on to the comics. Um, and whereas um, my youngest was like a little bit interested, uh, and, and my middle daughter, even though I'd got her specifically a comic, my middle daughter had literally no interest. My eldest was like, I, I love these comics, and I'm going to read all of them cover to cover. I'm like, oh, interesting. Now, in my in my youth, uh, how old does that make me sound? In my youth, I used to big into the comics. I remember the first comic I ever got and not understanding the concept of what a comic was. Um, I remember, like, specific issues of specific comics. I remember coveting um, Batman graphic novels and just that's all I wanted in the whole wide world was these three Batman graphic novels. Uh, I think I think they were they were Christmas presents, and it was just like the best thing ever. Um, and I, you know, through through a lot of my my younger years, I loved comics. So to see one of my children start to have an interest, me being me, I'm like, well, I'm absolutely going to lap John's of that. So I was like, let's go and look for comics. So we went to the comic book shop. Now then, comic book shops are different to when I was younger. Um, first and foremost, a lot busier than when I used to go into the comic shop. Uh, we're talking about the same shop 20 years later. Um, different location. I think the shop itself moved a couple of times maybe um different stock i would say not a million miles away but a little bit different a little bit more in the uh, anime area a little bit more in the uh, board games and things like that but still at its heart a comic book shop so it's it's um It's busy, is the short version. But, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm very much a man who, you know, find yourself a corner and have a look. As you go in, there's like discount comics in boxes. I was like, oh, we need to make sure to check those out. I was like, look, you want to go over to this section here and you just want to start looking and just start pulling stuff out. Um... So, we go and I was like, I know the sort of stuff that she's going to like. It's going to be, if they've got, you know, a Teen Titans comic, cool. If it's, you know, Wonder Woman, um, you know, Justice League, stuff like that. Um, but I could tell it was a little bit daunting. First sort of, first outing to a comic book shop, it was busy. The people that were in there weren't exactly children, you know, full blown, full grown adults. So I could see it was like, it was probably maybe a little bit much. So I was like, look, you know, let's have a look. Uh, like, okay, here we go. This is like, um, this is like a Robin and a Superboy comic. Perfect. And, you know, oh, there's a Wonder Woman one here. And, oh, there's a, you know, a, a Justice League one. Here. We went through and, went and found these things. So, I think we got like a couple out of the discount, box, like back issue discount, back issue boxes. I was like, cool. 
Something I did notice. Slightly. Slightly noticed. Was. That. Were any prices. On the comics. And I'm looking and I was like. Oh you know this one says it's like. Four dollars or five dollars. I was like you know. Dollar to pound conversion. Um. I don't know, that's what, what, like three quid or something? All oh, this. So we went to the counter and I handed them, you know, a, a pile. Not a mountain, not a, not a lot of comics. I handed them a few comic books. It's like, oh, we'll, we'll have these comics, please. Um, one of the guys working in there had helped us to find um, another comic. Um, it was like part of a set, so that was kind of cool. Um, very good uh, staff sort of situation uh, so the guy rang, rang them all up as you do and then told me how much the comics were going to be and I was literally like I'm sorry what and I felt like saying to him oh we got we, we got some of those out of the, the discount box that said that they were like a pound so you know at least two of them should be a pound because what? why do you want 30 pounds from me but this is this is something that that's always been the case I always want to encourage like anything anything at all if one of my children suddenly came to me and was like dad uh, you know I, I, I'm into ponies I'd be Googling how much it is to, to you know, get a pony. Now, I know, you know, chances are ponies probably expensive. And the, the keeping of them and the feeding of them and the looking after them. All of that. But I would, you know, look into, like, is, is there a way that you can go and, you know, go to some sort of place where you can look at a pony or something you know if 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 my children were like i'm interested in this then i would want to nurture it pretty much no matter what it was you know if one of my children was like i really fancy learning how to cook meth then i'm probably going to try and steer them away from that but you know i am I, i'm going to try and and help and nurture and and um facilitate wherever possible so i was like you never know it might be a one-off it's something that if it would if it became a permanent thing you'd have to look at and maybe just like whittle it down to like one or two comics maybe a couple of times a month or something but for this one time i was like ah let's just let's just do it um and over the over the next couple of days she um, read certainly two comics cover to cover of the of the handful that she got, um, and time was an issue. So I was like, I am happy with that situation. Um, now then, I've written something down because I wanted to talk about it. As you know, as that that's how things go. But I have this this. A feeling this itch at the back of my mind that I've talked about it before. So if you're a long time listener and and it, and it turns out I have talked about this before, I apologise. But <sighs> once upon a time, I bought my daughter's a Kindle. There was a whole host of reasons to buy a Kindle. A, it was a child one. B, when it, when I bought it, it was like, oh, for the for two years, you pay like a yearly fee of, of five pounds. You get all the features. Um, and like, you know, if they got games, all the features were unlocked and all that. I was like, for a fiver, that's awesome. So, I fully expected after two years, you know, year in, year out, I'd give them a fiver, and away we go. 
So I fully expected after two years of this, they would be like, right, now you have to start paying, you know, more a year or whatever. Now, admittedly, I probably should have looked further into this. Now, a year later, I'm like, well, there's there's three of them. They've got one Kindle. Two of them sit and watch one Kindle. One kind of controls what they do and what they watch and what they play. And I was like, they've got they've both got a profile on said Kindle, but I knew that you know, not not it's not not throwing any shade here, but I knew that one daughter was using the other daughter's profile to get more time doing stuff. Uh, because I'd put all of these time things on. You can say you can watch you can watch this this much time in, of videos, and you can play this much time of games, and you can read this much time in books. And I was like, you can have unlimited time reading books, but the others are restricted. And I was like, an hour of this, an hour of that, over the course of a day, sort of thing. So I knew, or I had a feeling that one of my daughters was using the other's profile to get more time. So I was like, for the sake of however much it is to get another one, and for the sake of argument's sake, I'll get another one. So, oh, you know, here you go. Here's another Kindle, two-year thing, pay a five a year, and away you go. And I'm pretty sure you get the first year for free because you bought the Kindle. A year later, Amazon are like, oh, you've, uh, you know, you've had your thing there. Pay for your year now. It's a fiver. I'm like, cool. A month later, it charged a fiver. I'm like, oh, that must be the other Kindle. Of course. Hey, it's five, five for a year. Both Kindles, it's tenner. No, no, no big issue, no major issue. Month later, Amazon charged me a fiver, and I'm like, "Eh? Well, there's only two Kindles, so what's going on there?" So then I looked into it, and apparently, I was paying five pound a month to run these Kindles. I'm like, "No," it's like, "Well." Only one of their two-year subscription will have run out. So if I reduce it down to one, then one's still on like the, the kind of free one and one's on the, the paid one, and that's only going to cost me £2 a month. I can live with that. So I did that, and a week later, uh, my daughter was like, uh, Dad, all the stuff on my Kindle has been white. I'm like, what do you mean? All the stuff that was on my Kindle that I used has gone. Uh, okay. Well, maybe that's to do, you know, maybe you can't play any games. Uh, so I was like, what are you watching these days? I'm watching Paw Patrol. Okay, well, that's fine because I, I know for a fact that Paw Patrol is on Amazon Prime. So, did a search for Paw Patrol. Um, mm, no. I was like, oh, that's strange. Okay. Did a search for Prime. Nothing. Amazon Prime. Nothing. I'm like, what is going on right now? So, the, free, the quote-unquote free two years, apparently if you buy a second Kindle... You don't get the free two years. The two years is just is just running, and then once that runs out, you then start paying for both Kindles, which makes literally no sense. If you don't pay, somehow the Kindles are wiped, and Amazon Prime, which is something we pay for as a family, it's you know you get all your free viewing and all that. As an Amazon product, you can't even have that on the Kindle if you're not paying for it. What an absolute 
joke. So much so that I was like, well, I've got a Kindle. And I pay, you know, I pay for Amazon Prime. We pay for Amazon Prime. And I can get Prime, the video streaming service, Prime on the Kindle. So how about I don't give you any more money and I just put Paw Patrol on my Kindle and they can watch that for free. Or I'll give you a fiver. I can't, I can't believe it. It's the most baffling system I've ever come across. But you know something? I can tell you this much. It works on the principle that parents at 7 o'clock in the morning care more about not having to deal with that nonsense than they do about £5 and will just give them the five pounds obviously it's going to cost you 60 quid a year to run a freaking kindle two technically 60 pounds so that my daughters can watch Paw Patrol which they can get for free because we pay for Amazon Prime what is going on? Anyhow. I wrote something on the list and I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to talk about this. And I don't know how I'm going to talk about it. So, like pulling off a plaster, I'm going to talk about it real quick. Um, recently... Um, and this is very much a double-edged sword. Recently, YouTube seems to have done like, like almost like a little bit of sort of promotion for the podcast. And the way that they've done that is that they've started featuring uh, some of the podcast videos on other videos. If you watch YouTube on a computer or um, certain like ways of watching YouTube, you get recommended videos down the side. And according to the analytics that I get from YouTube, YouTubers started adding some of the podcasts to other videos. And I was like, ooh. Now, the reason I knew this was because the YouTube videos have had this uptake. All of a sudden, all of these views were going on. And I'm like, ooh. Has something gone wrong? Has something, has something bad happened? Did somebody say something that was controversial? And, you know, we're going to get into trouble for something? So I looked into it, and that's what I found. YouTube have actually, you know, been like, hey, if you like this video, maybe you'll like this podcast. And to start off with, loads of views. And to start off with, People are like, hey, I'm going to click the like button because I've I've listened to slash watched your podcast. I have enjoyed it and I like it. So I'm going to click it. And then the subscribers started going up. Yes, we have got a subscription competition running. Uh, if you don't know what that is, check out the Getting Out of a Podcast. Um, so, you know, two things go together. Cool and groovy. And I'm like, oh, you know, with this exposure, after all this time, after all these years, finally getting a bit of exposure, um, you know, we could, you know, get a bit of traction. That's cool. I like that. And then what some might say, the inevitable happened. It has happened before and it has now happened again. The podcast got a dislike. Now then, I was going to say it's second, but technically it's actually the first. And here's the reason. Because a long, long time ago, the podcast got a dislike. Somebody took the time out of their day to click the dislike button. And I was, I was wounded, man. I was wounded. And then I think it was a day, a couple of days later, the dislike disappeared. Almost like the person who had pressed that dislike button had thought better of it and gone back and unpressed 
the dislike button. Maybe they pressed it by accident. But with addition, with additional exposure, with additional getting the podcast out there in the world, surely comes the opportunity for somebody to say, "Do you know what? I don't like this podcast," and they've taken the time to click that dislike button. And I've, I've thought about it a lot. I've thought about it, I'm like, what does this mean? And I've gone through hundreds and hundreds of different scenarios, starting with maybe somebody pressed the button by accident. Maybe they're trying to click, press the like button and press the wrong one. Maybe somebody listened to the podcast or watched the podcast and was like, "I, you have offended me and I need to let you know that you've offended me. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe it's time to stop doing the podcast. Maybe I can't handle that kind of... It's not rejection, is it? It's something else. Abuse? Maybe. Or maybe it's just par for the course. Maybe it's that. Um, At this point, what I would say is, if you are listening... I mean, you know, we're half an hour in. If you got this far and you don't like it, write a comment. At least there's something, you know, something tangible there that we can, you know, grab onto and and really, really sort of get into. But, hey, it, it was bound to happen, and it has, in fact, happened. Something else that we did... Um, over the last few days, uh, we went out. Um, when we went into town uh, in the afternoon, we took a little trip over to Askham Bryan Wildlife Park. Now, I've never been to Askham Bryan Wildlife Park. However, by the time I got there, I found out that two thirds of my children have. So I was like, okay, well, I've not been before, so you guys can show me around. Now then, here's the thing. I wanted to complain about this on the podcast. I wanted to complain. And here's the reason. I paid my money. I wanted to see animals. I wanted to see insects. I wanted to see lizards. I wanted to see snakes. I saw some insects. I didn't see any lizards or really any snakes or really anything in any of the exhibits that said that they had things in. So there was that. Then we went outside and I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe you know, there's more stuff out here. And we went to, the, to, went to see the meerkats. you you got to love a meerkat. At the end of the day, you got to love a meerkat. Uh, we saw three. Um... We saw a lot of animals from a from a distance, but you couldn't get to those. They were further off in the distance. Uh, we saw some wallabies. Uh, we saw these little uh, little monkeys. They were they were cool. Uh, some other little monkeys. A variety of birds. And that was it. And I was like, uh, I I, I kind of wanted. Wanted a bit more for my money. Now, it wasn't horrifically expensive. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't whatever. And I'd kind of resigned myself to being like, I'm going to complain about this on the podcast. I'm going to write it on my list now. I don't want to be paying money to come and see animals and insects and lizards and snakes and monkeys and not see any. I went to Yorkshire Wildlife Park on the hottest day of the year and all the animals were hiding. So far around, my children were like, oh, there's a park. Uh, can we go to the park? I was like, well, we'll go around and look at all the animals. And then, you know, if we've got time, we can go to the park. So we went to the park. And I've said this to a couple of people over the last day or so. I was like, as far as parks go, it's one of the best parks I've been to. It literally was like, we cater for children from... Probably, like, just able to walk, or even before they can walk, all the way up to, like, well into teenage years. 
and everything in between and multiple things. You could have had a hundred kids there and they could have gone on everything that was there and not and, and no two children would have bumped into each other. I'm like, do you know something? This park is pretty good. As far as parks go, it's pretty good. Now, there is a park next to my house, so, you know, there is there is that aspect. You know, I could have gone to a park for free. I was like, oh, man, you know... I, all I care about is that they have a good time. All I care about is that they have fun. And to a degree... Even if that's just playing on the park for an hour. Tick the box for me. And I'm like, you know, it didn't it didn't quite tick the box for for a wildlife park as such. A lot of the exhibits seem to be empty and all of this. But as far as a, an afternoon out, I think everybody had a good time. I think everybody was tired by the end of it. Job done. It wasn't until later when I was having a conversation with Leanne and I was like, if I'm honest, not great. She was like, well, it wasn't expensive. I was like, no, it wasn't expensive. It was it was reasonably priced, but, you, you know, you kind of want to see some animals and stuff. She was like, well, that's why it's not open on a weekday, because, uh, you know, when it's not open, it functions, uh, functions as a rehabilitation centre for these animals. And I, I, I kind of felt bad because obviously I was like I'd written it down on my list to give it the old finger wag and the old I expect better when I pay money. I want to come and see some animals, and then I felt bad going ah, oh, but they're doing good things for these animals and rehabilitating them, and I was like ah, now I just feel bad. Um, and they all had good time. So, what difference does it make? Um, I'm going to talk about something now, and then I'm going to talk about it again in a bit. So, remind me. I'm going to talk about adverts. If you've listened to this podcast more than once, you will probably by now know that one of my least favourite things in the whole wide world, and this is a thing since I was... A teenager watching a TV program, and they'd put they'd put an advert on. I'd be like, "Oh my god, adverts! I hate them! I hate them so much." So twenty years later, I'm like, "Ah, oh, oh, girls, gather round the television. Let me put a video on YouTube to show you something that I was talking to you about earlier. This video is nine minutes long." If the video is nine minutes long, why do we need three adverts? In in the middle, obviously not the middle, but you know, third of the way through, an advert. Third of the way through, an advert. Do you know why I hate adverts so much? Because they don't work on me. I have never seen an advert and gone, oh my God, I didn't know I needed that in my life. But now, now I know that I need it in my life. And I have to have it in my life. Adverts don't mean anything to me. If I if I wanted it, I would probably go out and get it without having seen an advert. And I know a lot of people will argue a lot of things. You, you would have never known about X if you hadn't seen an advert for it. Sure I would, because if it was good enough, it would have entered into my world at some point in some other means. Some people could say, well, you you watch film trailers, they're adverts. Mm, Are they? They're trailers. You like looking at trailers for games, upcoming games. Maybe you watched a video for upcoming games rather than starting this podcast. Isn't that an advert? No. I hate adverts. Instagram needs to give you two adverts now. Because one wasn't enough. For stuff that you're never going to buy. It's... 
Honestly, I could do an entire podcast just talking about how much I detest adverts. But, like I said, and the irony is, having said, you now get two adverts on Instagram. I'm going to talk about adverts twice in this podcast. I'm taking it back, people. Taking it back. Right, that's the stuff from the week. Let's now get into the entertainment section. And as I've said before, um, if you if you regularly tune into this podcast, if you regularly listen to this podcast, and you tune into it for one or the other section, if you're like, man, I wish you'd just hurry up and get to the entertainment because that's my that's my jam. That's what I'm here for. Drop me a comment and let me know. Send me an email and let me know. If you're like, oh, he's onto the entertainment stuff, I can turn this off now. Let me know. The more I know, the more I can tailor the podcast better to suit people's needs. Anyway, uh, TV-wise, I kind of just been watching. Um, I kind of just been watching black books. Uh, a couple of episodes a day, which is which has meant I've uh, finished series two, well into series three. Um, always had it in my head that I didn't like series three, and then I'm like, I think I'm like two or three episodes into series three, and they've all been absolute corkers. The holiday episode is one of my favourite episodes. Uh, and then I, before starting this, I watched the the episode where Manny's parents come to stay, um, which is also a very good episode, if not a little strange in places. Um, but no, no other series, I don't think. Um, yeah, well, we'll see. I'll tell you what I've been watching and doing, and then you can decide. Um, I finally cracked. And I watched uh, Evangelion. Uh, now that it's got it's got a strain, it's like three point plus one point Basically, it's the fourth movie in the in the remake, the fourth and final movie in the remake uh, of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, I'd put off watching four because my intention was to watch one, two, and three again. The reason that I'd put put it off was because I couldn't bring myself to watch the third one again because uh, the first two movies are great. Uh, Evangelion as a series is fantastic. It does get a bit bonkers towards the back end. And then once you slip into the movies that they did, it, it's a whole other level of bonkers. Um, if you don't know Evangelion... Um, but you're into anime, uh, look up just, like, the, the timeline of stuff uh, and how it sort of came about, how it came to be. And where we are now is that they've redone the movie. These mo- these four movies are, like, like a, it's like a do-over. And the first two films kind of cover the entire series and original movies. And if I'm honest, I, I wish they'd have kind of just left it there. But they didn't. They did two more movies. I can safely say that for two thirds of the fourth film, I didn't understand a single thing that was going on. And the last third, it was like. <sighs> the underlying story of Evangelion has always been the same. And it's like the most baffling concept. Like. Why it's all happening and why it's all going on, and the reason behind it is like that is it's just it's just lame. It's like really, um, so there, yes, I've I've finished them. Um, I'd like to say I'd go back and watch them all again. I don't think that's true. I might watch the first couple again. Um, we'll see. So, really long story. This is what you want, a really long story. Um, recently, the new Top Gun movie, Top Gun Maverick, was released. And I was like, I kind of want to go and see it at the cinema. And I kind of want to go to the IMAX. And I kind of want to get really immersed in watching this movie. 
and I don't want to go on my own. So randomly, I showed my eldest a trailer for both the original Top Gun and the new one. And I was like, would you have any interest in going to see uh, the, the new one? She was like, yeah, yeah. Like the, she was very enthusiastic about the idea. I was like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I'd definitely go and see it. I was like, okay. Well, maybe you should watch the first one. And I'm thinking about it. I was like, uh, it's, it might be a bit old for her, but um, there's the there's the planes and, and it's cool. Um, hmm. So I looked up and I was like, uh, the age rating uh, is an age rating that I would I would deem okay for her to watch, as I have done in the past with stuff that I've vetted. Previously, I was like, okay, well, okay, it's not it's not ridiculously out of uh, the realms of possibility. I didn't own it, which is not true. I do own it by her on DVD, which means it's not out. So I re-bought it on Blu-ray. And I was like, let's watch Top Gun so that we can then go to the cinema and watch the new Top Gun. Uh, so that's what we did. We, we watched Top Gun on... Thursday night um, and yeah I put it on and almost immediately regretted it because this is a film from 1986 when the age rating that they gave it will have been completely different to nowadays version of the same rating so every second word was a swear word I think that film has got so many uses of the word shit I was like uh, yeah but yeah there was all sorts loads of swearing I was sitting there like this was a this was a terrible idea uh, I had warned her that we would have to fast forward through a particular section and when, when we got close to that section I was like right you need to cover your eyes and I'm going to fast forward it um, so that was a few seconds of the film gone and that was that so we got to the end uh, and I was like did you get it she was like no not really I was like, what didn't you get? She was like, I didn't know who anybody was. They've all got different names. I didn't really know what was going on. So I went through it with her and I was like, these two guys, they've gone to the school. Best of the best. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Then they have to go and do real combat and all of this. All oh, right, I understand it a bit better. So I was like, she probably doesn't want to go and see the new one if she had if she struggled with the with the first one. So I left it until the next day. I was like, what do you think about going to see uh, going to see the second one? Oh, yeah. I'll go and see the second one. It's like, oh, okay. <sighs> so. Um, Lan looked up, like, how appropriate it might be. Because it had the same rating. So she looked up how appropriate it was. And by the sounds of things, it was more appropriate than the first one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I was like, right, I'll get us some tickets. Let's go IMAX. It's going to cost a bit, but hey, it needs it. It needs something like this. It needs that IMAX. So I looked, and the place was packed. I'm like, okay, we've got a problem. We can either sit off to the right of the centre, um, or really far over on the left. Or we can go a row further forward and sit smack in the middle. Which, when you go in IMAX, that's what you want to do. Oh, let's do that. I was like, cool. And I was looking, I was like, three rows back will be all right. There was a part of me that knew that was not the case. And I booked it anyway. So we went, we got there, we sat down, and I'm like, shit. Shit. Super close, on an IMAX. I had to crane my neck for two hours and ten minutes. It was it was quite painful. Even even my daughter was like, next time we go to the IMAX, let's sit further back. I was like, I know. So, we got there a little bit early. Got our seats, got set up. So when you go to the cinema, when you go to, like, view or something, you have to sit through, like... 
20 minutes of film trailers and 10 minutes of adverts. IMAX is apparently a little different. They do it the other way around. So you get 10 minutes of film trailers and 20 minutes of adverts. They showed that many adverts that they managed to get an advert in between the screen that tells you what film you've come to see and the start of the film. They managed to get an advert in between. I was tearing my hair out. It was like it was like water torture. It was abusive. The level of adverts for things that I couldn't physically care less about. There was a, there was a horrible advert in there. Uh, they did an advert where a a, a guy was like uh, seeing his seeing his children off, and they were going back to their mother. And then he shut the door, and then he turned off all the lights, turned off all the plug sockets, turned off the washing machine, turned off the boiler, put his coat on, and went and sat in the kitchen in the dark and the cold. I was like, wow. Then the phone rings, and uh, it's British Gas ringing to check on him, see how he's doing. And the advert was for British Gas. And they were like, if you're struggling with the uh, with the cost of living increase, you know, give us a ring and, and we'll help you out. And I went, that's an interesting advert, because isn't it the uh, energy companies that's the main reason for the problem with the living in, well, cost of living increase crisis? That advert's wildly insensitive and, uh, uh, and insulting as well. So that's cool. Anyway, enough about that. You want to know what I thought of Top Gun Maverick. I could talk at length about how I, I don't like Tom Cruise anymore. Used to. Don't like him anymore. Um, but he annoyingly keeps making films that I actually want to see. And I have to force myself to go and see things. You don't want to hear about that. You want to know what I thought of the film? Very much like Top Gun. It's a film where if they could literally edit out all the stuff on the ground, all the what I would call the human element, if they could edit that out and just have the planes doing plane stuff, these films would be amazing. Top Gun Maverick, I can't, I can't tell a lie on this. It. It's great. It's fantastic. The plane scenes are amazing. It's so good. It's so well done. I, I, um, part of a, a WhatsApp group where people were talking about it this evening and saying, like, it's got minimal CG in it. Um, but obviously, at this point in time, we know that they filmed all the, the plane scenes. In it. And it's just, it's amazing. There's a couple of actors in it. That I was like, why? Why were you in it for like four minutes? Um, it was really nice to see Val Kilmer in it. It was really nice to see the scene between Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer. Um, throughout the film, I was like, oh, they're doing like these little, little callbacks, little nods to the original. A um, couple of things that I will say that are a bit of a downside. One is. It was a touch too long. When I saw that it was two hours, ten minutes, straight away I was like, there is ten minutes of that film that you could easily get rid of without even seeing it. That film does not need to be more than two hours. I'm telling you that now. And I was right. It was a touch too long. Not Bad Boys 2 too long, where they finished the film and then they were like, oh, do you want another 45 minutes of stuff that doesn't make any sense? Sweet, here you go. It wasn't that bad. But it was a smidge too long. Part of the reason I think it was a smidge too long was all of a sudden, the film decided, we've done little subtle callbacks, we've done little subtle things from the first one. But now... 
we're going to absolutely crowbar in this section where we're going to try and essentially recreate a big element of the first film. I'm not going to spoil it. And I was like, ah, I thought you'd done really well up to this point, and now I don't know how I feel about this. And it ever so slightly put me off, and it ever so slightly tarnished the experience I had had up till that point. But both of those points are minor points because that film is amazing. It's really good. Can't say enough good stuff about it. I, I, it. It's one of those films that I was like, I cannot wait for that to come out to buy so I can watch it again. And I'm not going to lie, I have considered going to see it again. Like, you know, wait like a week or so. And then go back to the IMAX and try and get a seat for the back sort of thing. Something else that I've been watching um, is the the Oat Studio shorts. Um, Oat Studio is Neil Blomkamp, is it? Bloom Bloomkamp Blomkamp, uh, the guy that did District Nine and Chappie and things like that. Um, very similar in a lot of ways to um, Love, Death and Robots like little short movies uh, CG heavy lots of aliens, lots of robots lots of guns um, I've watched a few of them they average in about sort of your 20 minute mark, some of them are shorter some of them longer um, one of the ones I watched was just weird, they did this one that was like like those infomercial kind of things, but the things they were selling. Uh, one was like a, like a chainsaw for chopping stuff. It was it was weird. It was it was weird. Um, but the rest have been very good. The Sigourney Weavers in the first one. A lot of these, a lot of them were available online at various points. Um, they're very much a kind of look what look what can be achieved with like cg and stuff like that so they're quite interesting uh, i think i've got i think i've got a few left so i'll probably pick those up over the next week or so uh if i've got the time um computer game wise still still on with the vr uh i am playing the same stuff but i am playing pretty much daily um, so I've been playing Gun Club VR, trying to get, um, trying to unlock all the, like, the guns and things. I've been playing Pistol Whip. Uh, I finished Arizona Sunshine. Um, I am working towards getting back to the PC VR stuff. I think I'm going to go back and play Half-Life Alex again. Uh, and then go from there and see what other things I've got from all these bundles that I keep buying and not playing anything. Um, console wise Sniper Elite 5 um, I'm up to the last level I believe I believe there are 8 missions and I believe I am on mission 8 um, the missions are super long um, I, I would at most a day I'd probably play an hour and a half and if I'm honest you can't complete a mission in an hour and a half so you've got that sort of element um i'm not looking at it as a bad thing i'm looking at it as a good thing there's a lot of hitman elements in the game i think i might have mentioned this last time hiding bodies in in crates and unlocking new star areas um but honestly it's loads of fun i was talking to somebody today and i was like the of of uh, with it being the fifth game in the series, I would say that if anybody was ever considering buying or playing a Sniper Elite game, this should potentially be the game to start with. Um, I feel like it's the Diet Coke of Sniper Elite games because it's so... You can just pick it up and you can play it. And it's not... You know, it, it's geared towards stealth, but if stealth goes wrong, you can still get out of it and keep moving and keep progressing. Um... It's really good. It's got quite hard, or it's got harder, should I say, 
towards the back end, but that's kind of what you would expect from a computer game. Um, made a random purchase the other day, and I bought the um, the double double game thing for um, one of them was Jedi Academy, and the other one is Jedi Outcast. Is it? Uh, I already own Jedi Outcast, and I tried to play it, and I just couldn't get on with it because it's so old. Um, but randomly bought Jedi Academy and Outcast the other day. It cost me fifteen pounds, um, and I put Jedi Academy on, not expecting, not expecting great things. Um, but I found it to be quite enjoyable. Uh, one of the things that was strange about it was, was that some of the cutscenes were just there, there was like nothing to tie them together. They, it seemed like the editing was a little off. It's not something that I remember from it as a game. Um, but yeah, the the story doesn't exactly flow. Um, I had a quick go on that, but I do want to continue with Sniper, and I do want to get that finished. So I kind of backed away from Jedi Academy. It's a game that I have fond memories of playing. I do love, um, but uh, but memory is HD, as they say. So uh, the the old graphics are quite hard to swallow. Um. Any long-time listener will be surprised with what I'm about to say, but I also installed and started from the beginning another game because I've seen a load of videos recently which makes this game look completely different to the game that I actually played. The game in question is Ghost Recon. I know you're expecting me to say Wildlands, but I'm going to say Breakpoint. Seen some videos recently, and I don't know why they've suddenly popped up in like my YouTube feed. But it's like, here, watch this Ghost Recon Breakpoint video. It's like, I hate that game. It was terrible. It's like, yeah, but watch this video and see if you think the same. And I'll watch the video and be like, that looks cool. Have they changed it? So I've seen X number of videos. I was like, I have to find out for myself. Maybe they made all the changes that they always said they were going to. I've installed it. I've put it on. Now, two things. Number one, I started playing it at the end of a very long day. And I started falling asleep whilst playing it. Never a good sign. Number two, although there are quite severe changes have been made to that game, I'm already sensing that the core of the game is the same. And I think that that's going to mean that it's still not very good. Um, But there's obviously some difference between the videos I've watched and the game. So I don't know if it's maybe something that I just need to get a little bit further in it to find out. We might see. You might hear me talking about it next week. Let's wait and see. There we go. That's it. That's the podcast. Uh, Thank you for listening or watching or however you got this. Uh, Drop likes and comments and drop me some comments. How about that? Um, Until uh, yeah, until until next time. There we go. That's the podcast. So there we go. What do you think of that? Thank you for listening along. Thank you for watching or however you get you getting your podcast. If you made it this that far, big thank you to you. Uh, please do consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. You can also check out the website, thecookiecast.com. There we've got links for social media and a button. You click that button, send us an email, let us know how you're enjoying your podcasts. So there we go. That's it for this one. Until next time, I'm going to say bye. And I'll see you then.